There's video beside the matter sign. For corn wheat worm control, Curadam is in a class by itself. Buy old Milwaukee beer and your local distributor. And buy Elanco, the makers of Trefland. You'll get a better weed control with Trefland. And this year, get more value per gallon. A whole catalog full. See your Ag Chem dealer. And by Merchants National Bank, it pays to get checking with interest. And by Dane Bosworth with offices in Waterloo, Cedar Rapids, Dubuque, and Iowa City. Welcome to the home of the Jinx, Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. The Hawkeyes have never won here, not ever. Since 1972, the Indiana Hoosiers have beaten the Hawks eight times here, and the only time Iowa didn't play Indiana, they lost to Toledo in the 1979 NCAA Regional. A pleasant good evening to you, wherever you may be. I'm Bob Hogue. I'll be handling the play-by-play -play tonight. With me to add expert commentary, Bob Stoltz. And Bobby, what do you think about jinxes? Well, actually, uh, jinxes are not really meaningful. Uh, I think they're talent. I think talent actually beats you uh, in the long, long season. Ladies and gentlemen, actually gives you an additive Indiana impetus, University, and uh, sometimes this will help uh, the Iowa ball club. Let's meet tonight's starting lineup. And let's meet At starting forward lineup for Chuck Iowa. Rab, a 6'6 senior from Chicago, Illinois, number 32, Vince Brookin. And at forward for Indiana, a 6'8 junior from Galveston, Indiana, number 30, Ted Kitchell. At the other starting forward position for Iowa, a 6'6 junior from Chicago, Illinois, number 40, Kevin Boyle. And the other starting forward position for Indiana, a 6'8 senior from Indianapolis, Indiana, number 34, Steve Risley. The center for Iowa, a 6'10 senior from Chicago, Illinois, Number 54, Steve Craftison. And the center for Indiana, a 6'9", senior from Anderson, number 45, Ray Colbert. At one guard spot for Iowa, a 6'5", sophomore from Des Moines, Iowa, number 24, Bob Henson. For Indiana at guard, a 6'1 sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 11, Isaiah Thomas. At the other starting guard position for Iowa, a 6'2 junior from Chicago, Illinois, number 30, Kenny Arnold. And at the other guard position for IU, a 6'3 sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, number 20, Jim Thomas. The head coach for the Iowa Hawkeyes, ladies and gentlemen, is Luke Olson, and the head coach for your Indiana Hoosiers is Bob Knight. Some obvious bears there in the starting lineups. We'll get them straightened out after this break. This is the Iowa Television Network. Mulberry Street and Milwaukee are a thousand miles apart, but both places mean one thing to these guys, something great. Mulberry Street means real Italian food, and Milwaukee means beer. Cool, crisp, old Milwaukee beer, and man, were they ever made for each other. Whenever you think of the town of Milwaukee, you think of beer. And old Milwaukee thinks the train of its name. Hey, it doesn't get any better than this. 17 on-the-farm field tests could tell you how to... There's a good blend of drama and comedy. Anything in that show could happen and does happen every day. It's realistic and comical. I can identify a lot of the characters in the show with the uh, fellows I work with. So to blend the gamut, and I think it was uh, very well done. The program itself is very good. Texas Blues, it's a good show. Hill Street Blues, tonight at 9 on TV7. Indiana, all the six 
spectacle, the spectacular of the Big Ten. It's all right here. Iowa and Indiana, two of four teams of the Big Ten, currently tied for first place at three and one. Purdue and Illinois are the others. The officials for tonight's game at Marisit, Mike Stockner and Rollo Vallum, a big game between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Indiana Hoosiers. Again, those starting lineups for you because there was some gross errors, obviously, in the way the PS and PA announcer gave them to you. Ted Kitchell, Steve Risley, Ray Tolbert, Isaiah Thomas, and Jim Thomas will be starting for the Indiana Hoosiers. Vince Brookings, Kenny Arnold, Steve Practice, and Kevin Boyle, and Bobby Hansen for the Hawkeyes. Practicing against Colbert, and it will go to Iowa. And we're underway here in Bloomington, Indiana. Kenny Arnold over to Vince Brookins. All five Hawkeyes averaging in double figures. Brookins the leading scorer, about 14 points a ball game. Hanson tipped away by Isaiah Thomas. You'll see his hands all over the place. Practicing inside, and an early foul goes against Isaiah. So right off the bat, Bobby Schultz, we see Isaiah's quick hand. Yeah, watch this replay. Watch Isaiah now turn around, try to pick up on Kravchis, and finally gets him on the, on the hand. The, these two teams uh, couldn't be cloned any better. They're almost peas in a pod. This would be a, a probably a slow scoring game, but a very good ball game. Boyle inside to Special K, and Kravchis cannot hit his first opportunity. Colbert with the rebound. Isaiah to Jim Thomas. And Thomas misses and is fouled by Bobby Hansen. So a very quick transition game. Watch the replay as he goes in. He's got he's got a shoulder ahead of the Iowa Hawkeye there, and the Hawkeye can't do anything but put some body to him, which he did. You know, they say that Indiana is not a fast team this year, but they moved out of there in that fast break real, real good, and Isaiah Thomas leading them. Jim Thomas at the line to shoot two. He hits on the first one. Thomas, a 6'3 sophomore, the only member of this Indiana team, in fact, the only player in the Bobby Knight era, to be recruited from outside the Illinois, Indiana, Ohio area. He's from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And early going, it is Indiana 2. Iowa nothing. Kenny Arnold drives, shoots from the baseline, and misses. Boyle right there on the offensive board. Bobby Hansen tries from 18. And the Hawks are cold in the early going. Quickly ahead to Isaiah Thomas. One on three break. And Ted Kitchell tries to go over Vince Brooken and is fouled by Brooken. <laughs> Here it is again on this on Isaiah Thomas leading that fast break on Colbert's outward pass. And here again, that Indiana team is getting down the floor ahead of the Hawkeyes. Kitchell is 18 for 18 at the free throw line. All of those 18 free throws came in his 40-point performance against Illinois. That's right, he scored 40 points on 11 of 13 from the field and 18 for 18 from the free throw line. These are the only free throws, if he makes this one, that he will have scored against anyone else in the Big Ten. So Kitchell no longer perfect from the free throw line, but Indiana leads it 3 to nothing. Indiana, the top team in the Big Ten as far as fewest points allowed are concerned. That is Bobby Knight's philosophy. And Hanson will try for the baseline. He'll miss. Crashes is right there. That's beautiful. Bobby Knight is up off the bench. He thought that the Hawkeye was over his shoulders, but he didn't get the call. Much of the crowd here at Assembly Hall agreed with Bobby Knight. And Jim Thomas against Bobby Hanson. This is a, a great matchup out there, almost uh, inch, inch to inch. And a foul inside on Special K. Going to the free throw line again will be Ted Kitchell. Try to watch it on the replay here now. Watch him get the ball down in deep. He's just going to go up for that shot. Special K pretty much stays on his feet, but he did get some body on him. I think that's probably what Indiana's going to continue to do. They've been working it so well as they get the ball down deep. They're picking up fouls on our, some of our big men. And Indiana leads it by a score of 4-2. to two, Makes that 5-2 to two in the early going. 
We played less than two minutes, 18.15 left to go in the first half. We're live at Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana, where the Iowa Hawkeyes have never won a game. Boyle guarded by Risley. Risley did an excellent job on Clark Kellogg on Sunday afternoon. Brookins won't shoot. Kenny Arnold, he'll drive, try it inside the lane and score it. Boy, that is nice penetration. What, what Kenny has got to do, that back lane of Indiana is about 6'8", 6'8", 6'9", and they're jamming things, so the shots are going to have to come from the outside or from around the perimeter. Full court pressure, get the ball to Isaiah. Perhaps the top point guard in the United States. Played on the Pan American team and on the U.S. Olympic team. Both times he was started. Stolen by Kevin Boyle. Only Jim Thomas to beat. And Boyle scores it on a layup. And Iowa had it his first lead at 6-5. to 17-37 to go in the first half. Iowa has come back from a three-point deficit to go ahead by one. Jim Thomas hounded by Kevin Boyle. Stolen by Bobby Hansen. We may have a jump ball. Boy, that Here's is hustle. That's ball. beautiful hustle. That is beautiful hustle. Bobby Hanson probably could have been called for a foul on that, but consequently he just stayed right with the ball and he's gonna get a good jump out of it here. Hanson with a two inch height advantage. And the tip goes to Iowa. Crafts is in ahead to Arnold. The ball game, Bob Schultz, a lot quicker pace than I anticipated. Yeah, it really is. The ball goes out of bounds. Iowa will inbound under their own backboard. Yeah, actually, Indiana and Iowa are both putting the ball up a lot faster than normal. Normally, these uh, two coaches like to take anywhere from five to six or even eight passes before they go up for a shot. But they're not wasting any time tonight. And Jim Thomas comes away with an errant shot by Steve Crasherson. Isaiah Thomas between his legs. Colbert. He can shoot from there, but decides not to. Over to Tolbert again. The Big Ten leading field goal shooter. He misses the Kevin Boyle. Comes away with another board. That shot was almost down into the middle of the basket. Uh, just from the very few shots that we've seen so far, these rims at Indiana are very tight. You've got to put the ball right in the middle, or they're not going to... They won't let you slap a ball in. It won't bounce around for you tonight. Vince Brookins can't handle the pass, and Indiana will inbound it. Again, full court pressure. 16.36 to go. Iowa still up by one, six to five. Isaiah over the timeline. Isaiah Thomas averages about 15 points per game and about five assists. So he's worked a lot of points to his ball club. And Vince Brookins does a good job, gets a jump ball call. He'll go against Ted Kitchell. If they can If they can keep that ball away from Isaiah for just a little bit, they'll be all right. He is just so important to that Indiana offense. He always knows where the basketball is. That's the best thing about Isaiah Thomas. Not a real big guy. He's only 6'1 and a sophomore. Jim Thomas to Isaiah Thomas. His first scoring opportunity. He misses. Kevin Boyle keeps the ball alive. Well, here again, that rim, they're tight rims, and they're throwing that ball out. So they've got to be some dead eyes tonight to put that ball down. Boyle from 21 feet, he scores it. The only way to do it, hits the bottom of the net. The Hawks are juiced up out there, Crafton is jumping up and down. Kenny Arnold applies the double team, Jim Thomas over to Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah, nice move by Kitchell and he scores. That's why he had 40 against the Illini. Iowa eight, Indiana seven now. Kenny Arnold, playmaker. Inside to Crasserson, he can't handle the pass, and Indiana gets it again. And that brings Ludo Foot up off the bench, and we have a timeout. Iowa by one. This is the Iowa Television Network. I'm Buck Johnson, the uh, home run hitter. So far this year, I put 32 balls over the left field fence. I'm not going to fill a fork and soybean field. And you know, since Phil started using Crepland, it's helped him get some of the cleanest fields around. It's helped the team, too. We don't lose as many balls as we used to. I expect one thing when I come to Artie's. Goodies, and I get it. Every once in a while, they give me something I don't expect. 
Contests and offers, little presents. I don't mind. Save three delicious ways at Hardy. Order two hot ham and cheese or two regular roast beef and you can it's Iowa 8, Indiana 7, in Assembly Hall, Bloomington, Indiana. Bob Schultz, what has impressed you early on? What we thought would impress everybody. Tremendous defense these kids play. Before they're appeasing a pod, both coaches stress defense before offense. And you're really seeing uh, a fundamental ball club on both sides tonight. These kids really come to play good sound best. And already a substitution for Indiana, Randy Witt. The ball, that's him with the basketball right now. He's a swing man, can go either way at six foot six inches tall. Out of the ball game is Grizzly. Indiana. He's an All-American of some sort. He has a lot of talent over here. They've just been a little bit unsettled all year long on a starting five, which is not not a good thing to do coming into the time. You'd like to have your first five. Isaiah Thomas, that's why he is a preseason pick for All-American. The amazing things that he can do with the basketball in the lane. Puts Indiana up 9-8. Who tipped up by Klasterson. He cannot score. Isaiah again kicks it off his foot. Yes, he's got the Isaiah coming down that ball because he'll take it all the way to the basket if he can, and he's so good at dishing the ball off at the last minute. Still almost trapped. is up and back. This foul, Colton was all over. No doubt about that. As tight as these rims are tonight, a person could probably station himself up there on that dotted line and get an awful lot of long rebounds. Oh my! Oh, so we'll have to we'll have to get our eraser out on that one. Watch this on the replay. Watch Colbert come from that far side. In my estimation, that was a good block. It's up, but I think it was goal today, but I think the replay shows it's a good block. Stopped away by Colbert, who leads this team in block shot. Isaiah, all the way up the lane, fouled by Kevin Boyle. And this crowd is on its feet in Assembly Hall. You can hardly hear yourself. I tell you, this is this is the kind of a game that Isaiah likes. They are not picking him up early out here on the court. He's able to get the ball. Comes up there at the ball game. Some of his baskets from the free throw line on in. Isaiah Thomas for six seven percent free throw shooter. In the big ten, over ninety percent. Isaiah puts them right through, puts Indiana up by three, 11 to eight. 13-39 to go in the first half. Arnold to Brookins, guarded by Tolbert. There must be a mismatch somewhere, and Brookins pulls up. And it's the smallest rebound. And all the way to the lane. Pass back from Jim Thomas. And the foul will go against Number 30, Ted Kitzel. I tell you. Junior out of Galveston. They're both in. Both going to the first. From Brookings getting there. Just a slip. That's the way the game should be played. And Mark Cannon will check into the Hawkeye lineup. And that means that Bobby. Well, let's tell you, Isaiah Thompson. 
that ever since he walked on this car, he is a tough man to get away from. That, of course, means that Kevin Boyle and Kenny Harlow will now be... Arnold. Fires. And when you don't touch that rim, your shot goes down. And Indiana leads by a score of 11-10 now with 13 minutes to go here in the first half. Unbelievable. Whitman got rid of that basketball. And Indiana still has it. Jim Thomas. That's Randy Whitman. Trying to get it inside. Stolen away by Brookins. Quickly ahead to Kenny Arnold. Arnold to Crassus and inside. Knocked away by Isaiah. And the foul on Isaiah Thomas. It seems like Iowa is doing a lot better when they can push the ball up the court and go, to, go into their fast offense rather than setting up. They're trying Isaiah to get that Thomas, ball down. Excuse me, with two personal fouls, that could be a factor if Isaiah got into foul trouble. Four team fouls against Indiana. Four as well on Iowa here in the early going. So probably both teams will be shooting the one and one before this first half is over. Crassus had hit the first of two, a 65% foul shooter. Ties the game at 11 apiece. And now Iowa back on top. So the lead keeps switching hands. Iowa now on top, 12 to 11. Iowa goes in there, 2-2-1 two, two, press. The press is being broken by Isaiah Thomas coming up to that midcourt line. And whenever he gets his hands on the ball, he can hold it almost against two different people. Isaiah running that offense from the perimeter. Indiana will be patient. There's Whitman to Isaiah. Look at him take that one step in. That really uh, can change the defense up. Good defense by the Hawkeyes right now. And Steve Krasnison is clapping his hands inside. His big arms up in the air. Well, this is what we're talking about, control basketball. They passed that ball 13 times already. That's the 14th. They're not going to take a shot unless it's a fairly good one. Isaiah Thomas again, guarded by Kevin Boyle. That matchup zone of the Hawkeyes. The Hawks are laying back in there pretty good. The play here in the first half. Iowa by one, 12 to 11. Kitchell just able to handle that pass. Isaiah Thomas will try it. Stolen away by Kenny Arnold. Two on one, and he pawed the ball. That's too bad. They had a three on one going out there. The Indiana team took 19 passes. And we have a timeout of the floor. Iowa by one. This is the Iowa Television Network. When every drop of gasoline is precious, it's important to squeeze as much mileage out of it as possible. At Amico Research, specialized engine testing has confirmed that the higher octane of Amico Gasohol can help deliver better mileage because it isn't necessary to detune car engines to stop, knock, or run on. Amico Gasohol, the high octane solution that helps Amico's fuel supply go farther. You expect more from a leader. 17 on-the-farm field tests could tell you how to kill more corn rootworms this year. In field after field, 65% of farmers we tested got the same results. They switched from phosphate to furidan. They got better root ratings and more dead worms. This season, switch back to furidan, the only carbamate. Furidan, chemically, it's in a class by itself. Bob Hogan, Bob Schultz with you from Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana, where the Iowa Hawkeyes have a slim one-point lead, 12 to 11. A series of events gives the ball back to the Indiana Hoosiers. They have been very patient here in the early going. That's Kitchell looking inside to Colbert, almost dragged his pivot foot. Colbert to Whitman, over to Isaiah. Tipped away and stolen by the Hawkeyes. Kevin Boyle retrieves the ball, gets it to Kenny Arnold who crosses the timeline. This is very unusual that you've just seen Isaiah Thomas turn the ball over twice the last two times he's had the ball. Steve Trashes and scores. Iowa by three now, 14 to 11. 
Bobby Knight actually is, has been an inactive coach sitting over there on the bench so far. He's been rather, rather calm. We kind of thought that early when he didn't wear one of his electric coats to the ball game. <laughs> Very subdued class tonight. Well, we know he's not subdued, so he'll, he'll become more active, I'm sure of that. Kitchell takes the shot. Whitman to Isaiah. Quick passing. Knocked away by Crasperson. And Brookings comes up with it. Kind of Iowa playing tenacious defense so far. If Indiana's intention is to get it down low to Colbert so they can get some fouls on Crasperson, and Isaiah Thomas has turned that ball over three times in a row. And Kevin Boyle scores. So Iowa leads by five. 16 to 11. Under 10 minutes now. The Assembly Hall crowd comes to life. Ever since Indiana slowing down a little bit, Iowa has been stealing the ball and scoring on the other end. Steve Risley is set to come back into the ball game for the Hoosiers. Isaiah almost throws it away again. And it will go to Iowa off of the feet of Ray Tolbert. Well, that's four turnovers in a row by Isaiah Thomas. That one we would have to give uh, a little bit of impetus for Tolbert, though. He was not aware of the bounce pass coming to him. So Steve Risley, a starter, comes back in. Risley, a 6'8 senior. And Jim Thomas will sit down. So Whitman and Isaiah will play the guard spot. This is important that Iowa capitalized on these turnovers at this time. This is get Indiana's dobber done real good. Brookins from 15 will not hit it. No one went to the boards, and Isaiah gets a standing rebound. The transition game to Kitchell inside. Grizzly goes up. Colbert was pushed, but he scores. That's good basketball. They are really going to that board, both teams. Vince Brookins to Steve Crasserson, inside to Gannon, and Gannon was, scores on a layup. Beautiful pass. Oh, is that a super pass. Absolutely gorgeous. And that is a play. That's not just off the top of their heads. That is a planned play. Beautiful. Iowa's biggest lead, 18-13, and Tobert drops the pass out of bounds. The Hoosiers look very frustrated. I look at that Iowa coach and, and uh, assistants and bench players. They are the ones that are really active tonight. They are really on top of their game. Arnold gets it to Special K, Brookins fires, and it goes over the top. Those rims are really, really tight. That looks like too soft a shot to go up over. Yeah, this is a, the kind of a, a gym where you're gonna have to use the glass. You're gonna have to bank your shots if possible because those rims are tight. And Vince Brookins will sit down. He said something to Lou Olson, and so Bobby Hansen comes in for Vince Brookins. This is one of the reasons why the visiting coaches bring their teams out for 45 minutes or so in the afternoon before a game and shoot, get the feel of these rims. Isaiah with the ball right now, Iowa 18, Indiana 13. 8, 12 left to go in the first half. Isaiah knocked away again. So Isaiah's passes are just not finding their mark here in the early going. He's having all sorts of problems. And Steve Carpino will come in. And Kenny Arnold, who has played an excellent first 12 minutes or so, will sit down. Isaiah is finding a hard, a hard pass uh, on his passes, but I think it's due to that tenacious Iowa defense. These kids have got hands all over the place tonight. Whitman guarded by the freshman from St. John Bosco High School in Bellflower, California. Carpino in the ball game, number 15. Isaiah to Kitchell. Not standing down, third by Hanson. Two on one break. Hanson pulls up, can't score it. Right there for the old rebound. Four footer, no good. Pass inside again, a block. Well, I tell you, this is no game for a small fellow. Those are six, seven, and six, eight kids getting their shots jammed right down their throat underneath that basket. This Indiana crowd is imploring his team to get moving. Isaiah Thomas takes Carpino up in the air. Whitman does the same with Boyle. And Joel Boy, Iowa. Iowa is doing a magnificent job of defense here. They are covering for their fellas that lose a man. Just beautiful. And Randy Whitman, an excellent perimeter shooter, shows you why. Iowa by three again, 18 to 15. Crasserson to Gannon. He'll fire from 12. Won't get it. Bobby Hanson takes his man up in the air and loses the basketball. I don't know who tipped it away from him, but Hanson lost the handle somehow. Isaiah Thomas against Steve Carpino. That's Whitman. 
over to Kitzel. Kitzel can't do anything with it. And his back looks a little bit confused. Whitman again. He'll slow it down a little bit. Isaiah to Kitzel. And they're just playing catch right now with 6.27 left to go in the first half. Bob Hogue and Bob Schultz live from Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. Boy, I tell you, Indiana and Iowa are so much alike because they play, they pass that ball slowly, they try to penetrate, those guards try to hit the seams, they try to get that high percentage shot. And Kitchell from 19 will score. So it's 18 to 17 now. Well, there's six minutes to play in the first half. Boyle will go baseline into Crasherson. There's a mismatch. And the foul inside will go against Randy Whitman. 6'6", six, six junior out of Ben Davis High School in Indianapolis. We'll try to watch the replay underneath the basket here. Watch the Indiana player just fall into Crasherson. He probably lost his balance and just fell right into him. And we have a timeout. Iowa again by one. This is the Iowa Television Network. That's one of our old Roto-Rooter commercials. And what was true then is true now. We'll be here tomorrow to stand behind the work we did today. I don't know what I'd do without my bank checking account. It's so convenient. But I never earned a penny of interest until I discovered checking with interest. It lets me write checks as usual and also earn interest, compounded daily on all my checking money. So before I pay for the groceries or the gas station, or the bill for her braces. I'm earning interest. Make the most of all your money. Get checking with interest from Merchants National Bank. News Center 7. It's people with the experience, the talent, the drive to cover the stories that have a direct effect on you. They cut through the razzle-dazzle to get to the heart of today's important issues. Make the news make sense for you. Get with Eastern Iowa's number one news service. News Center 7. Noon, 5, 6, and 10. Five fifty-four left to go here in the first half. Steve Prasser's and Special K will be at the free throw line. To take a look at Lute Olson and Bobby Knight. Two coaches involved in a heavy chess matchup here in Big Ten play. Yeah, this is uh, it, it's interesting to watch the battle of the coaches too. Neither one of them are going to give any ground. When Knight gets up, Olson gets up. When Olson gets up, Knight gets up. It's a real battle of the chess men out there. They're moving their players around. And you can see why. This is a 17 to 18 ball game, and this is real basketball. Big surprise there. They said Crasherson was not shooting, so he didn't go to the line. And Iowa got the inbound the ball, and Steve Carpino hits his first shot. Boy, that's a beauty, and that's a big one for the young freshman. Let's hope he continues that for the rest of the evening. And Carpino hit a big one, of course, against Michigan that broke the Wolverines back when Iowa had that impressive win up at Ann Arbor. Five team fouls against Indiana, four against Iowa, with 5.28 to go here in the first half. At Grizzly, we haven't heard much from him. Kitzel is inside, blocked by Krasnick. And Indiana scores it. They're doing a little bit of, of low posting and swinging both of the deep deep people in and out. Now they've got uh, Kitzel, who was on the outside before, playing in the deep post, and he picked up that basket. So they're switching their 6-8 men from the outside to the inside. Whitman away with the rebound on the air shot. And Indiana can go up on top again. The lead is changed hands several times here in the first half. Grizzly over to Whitman. Inside to Kitchell. And he goes to work. And the foul will go against Mark Gannon. I believe so. We'll check that for you. It looked to me, it looked to me, look, watching the replay, see whether you think he travels or not. He looks like he does some stutter stepping down there. And apparently gives the Hawks the, the foul. Mark Gannon does pick up the personal foul. That's his first. Five team fouls now. Indiana is doing a good job of getting that ball down into that low post, though. And if a person is physical like most of these Indiana low post men are, if they go back up into that basket, they either get the foul or get the basket. And Steve Wake comes into the Hawkeye lineup for the first time. 6'11 center, a senior from Iowa City West High School, Steve Prasserson. Now with the most sterling shooting touch here this evening, he is sitting down for the first time. And Indiana does, in fact, go up on top. The excellent free throw shooting of Ted Kitchell. Puts him there. 440 to go here in the first half. Gannon will try it. Carpino from 18. No good. 
and Isaiah Thomas, players all over the court. Isaiah somehow controls that ball. How in the world does he do it? Stolen by Kitzel to Isaiah. Well, this is just a case of Isaiah Thomas trying to do a little bit too much, but the thing is, if he could have made that basket, he'd have had 17,000 people cheering him on. As it is, several thousand of them are on their feet. They like what they see here in Indiana. Their Hoosiers are up by one. Four minutes to go here in the first half. 21 to 20. A good first half. Glad you joined us here along the Iowa Television Network. Inside, stolen away by the Hawkeyes. Steve Carpino with a basketball across the timeline to Kenny Arnold. Over to Vince Brookings in the corner. Looks inside to Steve Waite. And we'll probably dish it outside to Mark Gannon. Instead, stolen away by Kitzel. Two on one break. Kitzel to Isaiah. Mark Gannon to beat. And Indiana leads by three. That was just a case of a bad Hawkeye pass. And Isaiah Thomas going one on one, taking it to the basket. And Kevin Boyle will no doubt come into the Hawkeye lineup, replacing Vince Brookins, who made that Aaron pass. Brookins to Steve Wake. Inside to Gannon. He's pushed, but no foul. There's a foul. And if it goes against Isaiah, that's three. Let's take a look and see who this oh, foul is. It is against Isaiah Thomas. Three personal fouls on Isaiah Thomas, and he'll have to sit down. Replacing him in the Hoosier lineup will be Tony Brown, a 6'2 sophomore out of Chicago, Illinois. And we have a timeout. Indiana leading 23 to 20. This is the Iowa Television Network. Hi, my name's Jerry. We're identical twins. Well, Alma. I like this 1981 Toyota truck because it's tough. I like this 1981 Toyota truck because it's low price. He always liked the bargain. And he always likes to be tough. Look, I see my sister's point. For the money, this truck is hard to beat. And I see my brother's point. A truck should be tough, like a Toyota. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Macho. Oh, 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 Since Iowa led it 18 to 13, Indiana has outscored the Hawkeyes 10 to 2 to lead 23-20 with 3:13 left to go in the first half. More importantly, maybe Isaiah Thomas has just committed his third personal foul. He has had to sit down and has been replaced by Tony Brown in the Hoot lineup. Indiana now with 16 fouls, Iowa with five. The next one will put Iowa at the free throw line in the one and one. Lute Olsen still can't believe that Iowa's not shooting in this situation. Thought his man was shooting. Instead, it was a non-shooting foul. And Steve Waite, nice two points for the Hawkeyes. Nice to see Steve uh, bank that ball in too, not have to use that rim. Tony Brown handed by Steve Carfino. Brown very, very quick. Probably second in the team in quickness. To Isaiah Thomas. He throws the ball away. Two on one break. And Brookins, an offensive foul. Little Olsen jumps up off the bench. Jumped about six feet up in the air and landed hard. Slammed down. Very upset with that call. Both coaches were up on that. I don't know why Knight was up, though. It was his, his team that got the foul. But that's a, a case of Brookings probably just with so much momentum, he just could not stop. And it's really too bad because Iowa had a two-on-one break situation, an ideal fast break. 2.40 to go here in the first half. Indiana by one. Whitman. Colbert to Whitman to Brown. And this, this is a beautiful motion offense that Indiana has. And Colbert just lays it in. All five people on that Indiana team are moving at the same time. They're going for that high percentage shot, but it is beautiful to watch because they really work that ball in well. 
In fact, Iowa is trying to do almost the same thing. They're trying to go down to their low men, get that high percentage shot. Brooker looking inside the weight. Bobby Knight wants a foul on Waiter. He doesn't get it. Boyle comes in, and he is fouled. Now Knight is up. Now he's imploring that official. He says, boy, he's giving our man the elbow. Let's see who got whom here on this foul. Watch Boyle come in from the side. Watch him get it. I think yeah. it was a good foul. I it think was it was a good call. Good call. And Bobby is not going to sit down. He's going to say implore him. Take a look at these coaches. They are both up, not going to get each other an inch. And Lou Olson is arguing with one of the fans. Lou Olson is arguing with one of the fans who is up about four rows of stand. Lou Olson just said, I want that guy out of here. He's talking about the man. The man with the Indiana hat, you see him in the background. Ludo just said, I want that man out of here. I have never seen that happen before. And that man is now up, and Ludo is yelling at him. We have some gendarmes down here taking a look at this fella. He's not long for this world if he keeps it up. And Kevin Boyle takes the free throw and quiets the crowd. Kevin Boyle shooting one and one. Both these teams are so emotionally high. I have never seen Lute Olson so intensely angry at a fan in all my life. And we have 156 to go here in the first half. And Kevin Boyle sticks the second one. It's 25 for Indiana, 24 for Iowa. And Dennis Johnson will come back in. And Bobby Knight is furious now. Well, he does not, not like that the play was stopped. Bobby ought to be furious at his own timer then because it's his own people sitting on that bench. And you can see Knight just furious. Now we're getting an active Bobby Day. Full court pressure. Dennis Johnson was the man who came in for Steve Tarfino. And Ted Kitchell, not a good ball handler, being hounded ahead to Randy Whitman. 148 to go. What a ball game in the Big Ten. Ray Tolbert looks inside. That's Brown against Johnson. Kitchell knocked away. No foul is called. Kevin Boyle comes up. That was great defense. Kitchell just went up, lost control of the ball, and lost it. No foul on that one at all. Unbelievably, and Bobby Knight says that the ACC is better than the Big Ten. He can't convince anybody here of that. Dennis Johnson looks inside the wave. Won't go to him. Kevin Boyle. Bad pass to Brookings. Several people on the floor. And a foul is called against Dennis Johnson. And that means well, the Kitchell will go to the line, shooting one and one. There might have been a jump ball yeah. called earlier. Watch, watch a steal in here. Now watch him lose control of the ball. Absolutely loses control of it. Just a good defensive play. And Mark Gannon will come in as Vince Brookins sit down. Dennis Johnson with his first personal foul. No one of the Hawkeyes in serious foul trouble, although Vince has two. Kitchell missed one earlier. His only miss in the Big Ten, but other than that, he's perfect at the line. Five of six. And he'll score again. Well, he can sure shoot free throws. Indiana by three, 27 to 24. One ten to go here in the first half. Kenny Arnold against Brown. Arnold fires from 15, won't get it. Wait up in the air. And Arnold fouls Kitchell. I think uh, it was probably a foul, but the thing is when they when they leave the obvious go, watch it on the replay now. Watch him. Kenny Arnold will probably you'll probably see him sliding underneath here, and it was definitely a foul. Arnold was moving into him. But it, it's that kind of a foul that is being called as some of that hatchet work that's going on underneath the basket is he's not being called at all. Unofficially we have Ted Kitchell with eight points. Steve Prasser comes back in. Steve Wade will sit down. So an exchange of senior centers here for the Hawkeyes. And Indiana can go up by four points. That would be their biggest lead here in the first half. Iowa once enjoyed a five-point lead. This is what Iowa cannot afford to do. They can't let I Indiana start to get off to a seven or eight or nine point lead because these fellas control the ball so well that they can just sit on it. Get up! And they also have excellent free throwers as witnessed there by Ted Kitchell. He puts Indiana up by five points with under a minute now, 55 seconds. 
Indiana 29, the Hawkeyes 24. Crasherson throws it away, and Indiana gets it. Well, that was a lucky save because when he threw that ball back in bounds, it only missed D.J. Johnson by a couple inches, or he might have had the basket for Iowa. Colbert puts up one figure. That means one shot. The Hoosiers will go for one shot with 33 seconds to go. Colbert looks inside. Whitman. This has all been done with Isaiah Thomas on the bench with three personal fouls. 20 seconds now. Inside. Blocked by Klasterson. And the Hoosiers will inbound with 18 seconds under their own bucket. Coming up at halftime, we'll have Frosty Mitchell interviews from Iowa City. Fifteen seconds now. Brown to Whitman. To Kitchell. Tony Brown again. Down to seven seconds. Risley with four seconds. Three seconds. Tipped away. And it almost goes. And we have a halftime score. Indiana leads Iowa 29 to 24 from Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. This is the Iowa Television Network. The Cascade River and Milwaukee, Wisconsin are 2,000 miles apart, but both places mean one thing to these guys, something great. The Cascade means salmon, and Milwaukee means beer. Cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer. And man, were they ever made for each other. Whenever you think of the town of Milwaukee, you think of beer. Oh, Milwaukee, it's the greatest place. Yeah. No, it doesn't get any better than this. 17 on-the-farm field tests could tell you how to kill more corn rootworms this year. In field after field, 65% of farmers we tested got the same results. They switched from phosphates to furidan. They got better root ratings and more dead worms. This season, switch back to furidan, the only carbamate. Furidan, chemically, it's in a class by itself. I expect one thing when I come to Hardy's. Goodies, and I get it. Every once in a while, they give me something I don't expect. Contests and offers, little presents. I don't mind. Save three delicious ways at Hardy's. Order two hot ham and cheese or two regular roast beef, and you pay only $1.99. Choose one of these things, still pay only $1.99. Come to Hardy's and get two sandwiches for only $1.99. Hardy's, best eaten in town, up and down and all around. You start before dawn, and supper time comes 16 hours later. It's planting time, but right now is your time, your time with them. Times like these, the last thing you want to think about is weed control. That's why you use Trefland, because Trefland makes weed control one less thing to worry about. That's for sure. What a good first half of emotional Big Ten basketball. Lute Olsen and Bobby Knight. Boy, they were up off that bench four times and they were on it. The lead exchanging hands several times. Iowa's biggest lead was 18-13, about halfway through that first half. But after that, the Hoosiers outscored the Hawkeyes 16-6 the rest of the way. And they enjoy their biggest lead, 29-24 at halftime. There's more to Hawkeye athletics than basketball or football. There's also women's competition, something that the University of Iowa exists in. Rossi Mitchell talked with some of the coaches and players of the women's track team the other day, and also the coach of the women's tennis team. Rossi? of the women's track and field team at the University of Iowa now in his fifth year. Coach, a heck of a cross-country season, uh, Region 6 champions, number 10 in the nation. But all that's behind you now. you got to worry about indoor track. All right, but uh, we're looking forward to our indoor season. We have uh, our opener on Friday, uh, which will be a triangular at uh, the University of Missouri versus the University of Missouri in Arkansas. Haven't seen your team yet. Where do you think the strengths will be? Well, we hope that we can have uh, overall strength in the in, uh, throughout the uh, lineup this year. I think we had a good recruiting year this year. That has helped us a great deal. The middle distance and distance events, as evidence in cross country, will, should be better than ever before. Uh, sprints have been traditionally strong at the school, so we should uh, be, be good there. And, uh, of course, the field events uh, continue to improve. So I think overall we're going to be tough on our opponents as a result. Coach, let's meet some of those Lady Hawkeyes, and we'll start with a little lady that was a cross country All-American. 
Hi, I'm Nan Doak. I'm from Hedrick, Iowa, and I'm a distance runner. I'm Penny O'Brien from Fairport, New York, and I run middle distance events. I'm Judy Parker from Dillon, New York, and I run long distance. Denise Cameron from Sanborn, Iowa, and I'm a sprinter. I'm Julie Williams from Spencer, Iowa. I run middle distance events. Zanetta Weber from Columbus Junction, Iowa, L run long distance. I'm Colleen Gauss from Iowa City, and I run sprints. Christy Dickerson from Indianola, Iowa, and I run sprints. We've seen high school track have a tremendous growth uh, in the state of Iowa. Coach Jerry Hazard, uh, has collegiate track uh, grown proportionately? Well, I think it has. I think the collegiate women's track and field programs throughout the country have really improved dramatically over the past couple of years. And I think sometimes that people don't realize just uh, what we're faced, uh, what we're up against when we compete at uh, both the Big Ten and the national level at this point. I should, I should add that uh, Iowa, I don't think, continues to gain momentum in, uh, in relationship to the better teams in the country. And I think uh, more and more we feel that we have an athlete fit to uh, meet the top-level competition. Coach, our best to you and uh, those Lady Hawkeyes in the competition. We'll be back with more of the halftime uh, festivities right after this word. <laughs> Today's cars, with newly designed engines, are built for performance and better mileage. And to help keep the new cars and all cars running the way they should, here's Amoco's lead-free choice. Quality Amoco lead-free in the blue pump, and Amoco gasohol in the white pump, for engines that need high-octane performance. And they're both seasonally blended for better starting and smoother warm-ups in winter. You expect more from a leader. Oh. They switch from phosphate to Puridan. They got better root ratings and more dead worms. This season, switch back to Puridan, the only carbamate. Puridan, chemically, it's in a class by itself. Next on Cinema 7, John Adams. Good God, what in the hell are you waiting for? <laughs> Ben Franklin. We've spawned a new race here, Mr. Dickinson. Rougher, simpler, more violent, more enterprising, less refined. We're a new nationality. We require a new nation. Thomas Jefferson. And tonight, tonight I'm leaving for home. On business. Family business. Give her a flourish for me, young fella. <laughs> Madman. Landlord. Lawyer. William Daniels, Ken Howard, and Howard De Silva bring America's stormy history to life in 1776. Sunday night at 10.30 here on TV7. We're talking with Kathy Ballard in her fourth year as the head women's tennis coach of the University of Iowa Lady Hawkeyes. Kathy, you got some real excitement coming up. Yes, we do, Frosty. On January 31st, Iowa will host the Iowa State Cyclones in a World Team Tennis match here at the Recreation Building at 7 o'clock. In the World Team Tennis match, we play one set of women's singles, men's singles, and then one set of mixed uh, doubles to determine a, a championship. The, the score is cumulative, and it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of excitement right to the end. And uh, in addition to that excitement, there's something else earlier. At 5 o'clock, we're hosting a clinic for any high school or adult uh, tennis players that are interested in getting some tips on their game, how to improve their game, how to prepare for a, a nice fall season that we, we're getting some signs of right now. So we're, we're looking forward to some exciting uh, pre-game uh, events. Kathy, what a way to start a season when you say Iowa, Iowa State, no matter what the sport you said at all. That's correct. Last year we hosted Iowa State here, and we had an exciting match, and we're looking forward to some similar competition this year. And we'll be back with more of our uh, halftime, but first of all, these words about your university. Life is quite different than it used to be when I was younger. I now have freedom. New students are learning to write. One way they are learning is by reading another student's writing back to them. This technique of peer review is just one way that Sandy Bolton of Mount Vernon High School teaches her students to write more effectively. Some of Sandy's techniques of teaching writing were learned in a summer writing institute at the University of Iowa. The Southeast Iowa Writing Project was developed and conducted by university professor Cleo Martin and Jim Davis of the Grant Wood Area Education Agency. 
In subsequent visits in her school, Professor Morton says she found a kinship with elementary and high school teachers because they share the same problems and are working toward the same solution. The purpose of the program is to encourage students to write and to motivate them to communicate effectively. Teacher and student response has been excellent. The students are very enthusiastic about this program. The great thing about it is that it not only allows them the freedom, the creativity to compose, but it also teaches them the discipline to correct spelling, punctuation, and grammar. In its first few years, the writing program has reached several thousand students. Program developers hope to expand the project to reach every school system in Iowa. The university's mission is service through teaching and research. Students in Iowa are learning to write through a program conducted at the University of Iowa. The University of Iowa, serving Iowa. <laughs> Toyota Corolla that I have over 80,000 miles on. I spent less than $100 in repairs on it. It runs like a top. And that's why I bought this one. As soon as I saw this silica, it was love at first sight. I just love it. The Chappelle gave me exactly what I wanted. Economical and dependable transportation. Now that's value talking. Toyota's put together better. <laughs> that's all there is to it. <laughs> talk you. You're talking Toyota. See your Iowa Toyota dealer now. I expect one thing when I come to Hardy's, goodies, and I get it. Every once in a while, they give me something I don't expect. Contests and offers, little presents. I don't mind. Save three delicious ways at Hardy's. Order two hot ham and cheese or two regular roast beef, and you pay only $1.99. Choose one of these things, still pay only $1.99. Come to Hardy's and get two sandwiches for only $1.99. Hardy's, best eaten in town, up and down and all around. Mmm, lobster. I'm really impressed. I can't believe the party for this many people. You know, I'd love a home like this. Someone gave me a tour. Silk draperies in the bedroom. Well, honey, Paul has a really good job. Is it this one? Oh, they must have something else going for them. I wonder how they did it. Dean Bosworth knows. Offices in Waterloo, Cedar Rapids, Dubuque, and Iowa City. Friday night on PM Magazine, meet the Spider Lady. She's a 70-year-old widow with a house full of those creepy crawly creatures. Find out why her simple hobby has become a full-time obsession. Then watch an incredible test of man versus machine when a fast-moving tobacco cutter takes on a grueling and dangerous race against a tobacco cutting machine. That's PM Magazine, Friday night at 6.30 here on TV7. Still halftime here, Indiana leads Iowa by a score of 29 to 24. It was the first half that saw the lead change hands four times. Iowa led it six to five and 12 to 11. Built up an 18 to 13 lead before the Indiana Hoosiers came back and now enjoy a five point margin at 29 to 24. Glaring first half stacks show that Indiana out-rebounded Iowa by a count of 17 to 13. And Iowa, of course, the top rebounding team in the Big Ten. Indiana was near the bottom. But bigger than that is the fact that Iowa has hit only 10 of 30 shots, while Indiana has made 8 of just 18 shots. And at the free throw line, Indiana 13 of 14 with Ted Kitchell scoring 13 points. We'll be back to review more statistics and the second half tip-off when we come back. This is the Iowa Television Network. Lobo, Texas, and Milwaukee, Wisconsin are a whole country apart. But both places mean one thing to these guys, something great. Lobo means the hottest, tastiest, chili in Texas, and Milwaukee means beer. Cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer. And man, you can't have one without the other. Whenever you think of that, Milwaukee, you think of beer. Seventeen on-the-farm field tests could tell you how to kill more corn rootworms this year. In field after field, 
65% of farmers we tested got the same results. They switched from phosphate to furidan. They got better root ratings and more dead worms. This season... Quickly, Bob Schultz, your comments on the halftime statistics. Well, I think the statistics pretty much bear it out. Iowa's got 33%, Indiana 44%, Indiana's hit by five points. It's just a matter of getting a few of the Iowa shots down. I think that the Indiana team has probably done a little bit better job of penetrating down deep and getting some of their big men uh, to exchange. In fact, uh, Kitchell is 6'8", Colbert is 6'9". Uh, then you come up with uh, Risley is 6'8". They've been interchanging and going down low and still coming up with most of the points, and I think he's got 13 in the first half. So if we can shut off Kitchell, I think it uh, will be a little bit of the way home, and if we can slow down Isaiah Thomas, because he is part of their offense. Kitchell, the leading scorer in the ballgame with 13 points. Isaiah Thomas with three personal fouls. Kevin Boyle leads the Hawkeyes with eight. And the tip will go to Vince Brooken and the Hawkeyes. The lineups here to start the second half, the same as the first half. We'll set them for you as we go. Vince Brooken over to Kevin Boyle. Inside to Preston, who scores. There's that same play, that nice pick roll, and that drop pass from Boyle that time to Preston, and it worked beautifully. Randy Whitman. Starting for the Indiana Hoosiers in replace of Jim Thomas. We didn't hear much from Jimmy in the first half, and so Witt will start at the other guard here in the second half of the Hoosiers. That's Risley to Isaiah. Isaiah again with three personal fouls. Going against Kenny Arnold. Kitchell and Isaiah play a little bit of catch. Working it to Whitman inside. That's Colbert. Stolen away by Vince Brookins, who finally finds the handle. And Iowa can pull to within one point. Kevin Boyle with eight points to lead the Iowa Hawkeyes. Trasselson with six. Kenny Arnold with four. Trasselson to Bobby Hansen. Started by Whitman. Inside to Brookins. He'll try the baseline jumper. Again, those rims are tight. And Boyle, I don't know how he got rid of it, but he did. A heck of a job. Kenny Arnold shoots and scores. Well, and Iowa has pulled it within one. I think Arnold ought to give uh, Boyle half of those points. Beautiful rebounding. A great job. Definitely a 9.7 scoring the Olympic method, and Ted Kitchell is fouled by Kevin Boyle. So Kitchell, who has been at the free throw line seemingly all game, will go there again. Nine of ten in the first half. Watch this here. Now this is why Kitchell gets a lot of a lot of free throws, because he goes to the basket, and then he leads up into that basket. He does a great job. He's not particularly fast, but he does go to the hoop. Kevin Boyle picking up his second personal, the first team foul of this the second half. Kitchell obviously not always perfect there for the line. The Hawkeye fans certainly appreciate it. Second one also not good. It crashes it right there. Knocked away. Out of bounds by Steve Risley. And the Hawkeyes will get it. So Risley with the quick hands knocks the ball away from Special K. But Iowa gets it and can now go on top. Lute up that time. He thought that they foul crashes in the Probably presumes they did because he had his hands on the basketball and was knocked away. Brooklyn to Arnold. Arnold looking inside. That rotating, rotating offense for Iowa. Special K knocks the man down. Offensive foul. Trasherson does not like to call. Lou Olson does not like to call. Watch this on the replay. Now watch the weak side man come in behind Trasherson. He establishes himself. I think it's a good call. And Whitman having trouble getting the ball in bounds, but does go to Tolbert. Back to Whitman. 18 10 left to go here in the first half. Indiana by one. A very emotional game. If you were not here in the first half, Lute Olsen jumped up off the bench and wanted a fan thrown out of this assembly hall. Indiana, again, very patient with their offense. Tolbert. Knocked away by Bobby Hansen, and he fouls Whitman. All right, watch this on the replay now. Hansen lets let his man get by him, then he comes from the outside. This is not a good defensive measure because the man is penetrated. He's by the defensive man. Let him take the shot and hope he doesn't make it. So Randy Whitman at the free throw line to shoot two. And the first one is no good, so... 
The Indiana Hoosiers, who were very, very hot at the free throw line in the first half, come out ice cold. That's good news for the Hawkeyes. And Whitman hits on the second opportunity, so Indiana one for four in the second half. They're up by two at 30 to 28. 17, 40 to go. Vince Brookins will try. Oh, that is Vince beautiful. Scores. That's a very important bucket and ties the game at 30 apiece. So 17 and a half minutes to go to decide this one. Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. Randy Whitman from the baseline. That won't go. Vince Brookins way up there. Good transition game. But by Whitman, he must have traveled. It will be called. That's right. That whole Iowa coaching staff was up on their feet on that one. For obvious traveling call, but they were a little bit low and blowing the whistle. Blue Blue the least smile violent. on his face. Because he, he can't mind. believe how long it took for that one to get called. It was so obvious. Boyle's got the pick and the shot and the bucket. Boy, what a nice soft shot. So Kevin puts the Iowa Hawkeyes up on top for the first time here in the second half. Isaiah Thomas with three oh. fouls. And the foul against Isaiah, his fourth personal, and Steve Preston is down on the deck. Now that was a good call. Bobby Knight is up, but he's not going to demonstrate too much. Watch this, it was very obvious. Isaiah Thomas picks up about five. He didn't quite get the first down on this one. I'll tell you, but he sure mowed over that linebacker, didn't he? <laughs> now Bobby Knight didn't uh, argue too much of that one. And yeah, Isaiah will up. sit down. And as replacement as it was in the first half, Tony Brown with a lot of pressure on him. Three team fouls against Iowa here in the second half. One against Indiana. That could be a factor. Kevin Boyle against Grizzly. Gets it over to Kenny Arnold. Crashes it. The high post. Iowa still trying to penetrate down deep if they can. Hanson pulls up. 14-footer. No good. There's Kitzel. Ever present. And Indiana can tie this one up. Brown almost dragged his pivot foot. Colbert, a good shooter, decides to pass up the shot. That's Grizzly. To Whitman. Inside, knocked away. It will go to Indiana. I tell you, if you can pick this up at home, if they show you a large enough portion of that floor, those are double screens that the Iowa Hawkeyes are fighting through down underneath that basket. And sometimes it might look like an Indiana player is wide open. It's only because he's fighting through a double screen down low. Whitman to Brown. Kitchell saves the Aaron pass. Big guy. 68 inches tall. A junior averaging 15 points a game. Brown very quick over to Whitman. And they play catch. Kitchell tries to the baseline. Hits the side of the glass. One on two break. Kenny Arnold forcing the ball up the court. To Brook as he stops. Does not travel. Out to Arnold. He misses the shot. Tipped up by Krasnick. And Indiana gets the ball again. So the ribs are still very tight. They haven't loosened up a bit. Whitman tries and misses. And Arnold again on the fast break. Good transition game here by Iowa. Brookins on the baseline. 16 for the guy. Boy, that whole Hawkeye bench is coming up cheering on those. And Iowa has outscored Indiana 10 to 1 in the first four minutes. Boy, and Bobby Knight five is seconds. And Bobby Knight wants a timeout. And Iowa leads it 34 to 30. This is the Iowa Television Network. Last spring, localized weather disasters cost certain soybean growers thousands of dollars. It didn't rain in time to make a lot of rain-activated herbicides work. These growers were out the price of the herbicides, and some got lower yields to boot. And that's a shame, because their neighbors who use Tresland got fine weed control. Tresland works, even without timely rain. Can you really afford a failure? Tresland from Alanco. Hey, guys. Hot ham and cheese. Hey, Ernie, it's your favorite sandwich. Where'd we go? This is Shung Sandwich. It really is one of a kind. Ham and cheese and ham and cheese. Melty and juicy. That Ernie. Bring him lunch and he takes off on me. Ernie, where have you been? Oh, just uh, out for a little ride. <laughs> Party, best eating in town, up and down all around. Bob Hogan, Bob Schultz, live from Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. In case you're wondering, our camera work tonight, the teleproduction company of WTTV, Indianapolis. 
So our fine production crew of Carnaby Square Teleproductions not able to make it with us here this evening. They will join us, though, next week, next Thursday night, when Iowa hosts Purdue from the Iowa Fieldhouse. Fifteen minutes to go in a big game in the Big Ten. Two teams currently tied for first place. Indiana with the basketball down by four. And a foul by Kenny Arnold. He can't believe it. He wanted a five-second call. Oh, I'd like a replay on that one. This is great, great defense. And to call a foul on, like, uh, on that is... So Arnold commits his second personal foul. Four team fouls against Iowa. Only one against Indiana. Again, we mentioned it could become a factor if Indiana can go to the free throw line. Ray Probert inside. That's a good. A chance for a three-point play. Ray Probert. Watch this on the replay now. Watch Probert here. Go back into the basket. Pivots around, crashes and goes up. He just made a nice move in there. And Steve Crassus is getting into foul trouble. The first Hawkeye to do so. Three personal fouls. And Colbert at the line. Converts on the three-point play. And Indiana pulls to within one. Kevin Boyer with the basketball on the other end. 14.40 to go in this ball game. What a good one it is from Assembly Hall in Bloomington. The Hawkeyes have never won here since 1972 in nine tries. Mark Gannon, the big crooked, partially blocked, tipped out of bounds. It looked like it went off the hands of Ted Kitzel, and the ball instead goes to Indiana. Lou Olson up off the bench again. He has been very emotional here this evening. I don't blame him. That was one of those uh, calls where it could have been a jump ball. Looks like both of them had their hands on it. Kitzel having trouble, almost dragged his pivot foot. The ball comes right back to Kitzel, just as if he wanted it that way. Almost took away by Boyer. 14-15 to go. It is very loud here in Assembly Hall. Well, I tell you, there are some real who's your fans out here tonight. They're very demonstrative. Kitzel on a pass from Whitman. Gets it out to Brown. That's Whitman. Looks inside to Colbert. Gannon is running it. Bobby Hanson will check in with the next opportunity. And Colbert scores. Ray Colbert with nine points. And Indiana back on top. 35 to 34. So Indiana with five straight points. And Ray Colbert takes the lead again. Rasmussen. Gannon was posting up. They couldn't get the ball to it. Brookings will fire away. He'll miss. Rasmussen right there. He'll go up and score. We'll see if it counts. We have got no determination from the official. I'm not too sure they gave him the basketball, <clears throat> the basket on that one. Let me take a look. And yes, they did call it good. Good. That's a nice second effort. He made that double pump to come, up, come in and get that basket too. See, Parfino comes back in. Kenny Arnold will sit down. So the pressure again on the freshman Parfino who scored two big points there in the first half. Iowa up by one, 36-35. Passes to can increase that lead to two. He cannot do it. Bobby Hansen is there, and Iowa will get the ball out of bounds. Oh, now that was sheer hustle from Bobby Hansen coming from an outside position at 6-5 to tie up Ray Colbert at 6-9. That is really hustle. Well, who's had a hot hand. He was the leading score for the Hawkeyes in the first half with eight points. Can't get the ball to anybody. Now that Bobby Hanson back to Boyle. And Boyle will pump away and score it. Well, I tell you, he shot that one from downtown. It wasn't a particularly good shot. And Boyle calls it a foul. And Lou Olson is up again. And Boyle picks up a foul after the bucket. He has 12 points, but three personal fouls. And Iowa is in trouble with, those three, with the uh, fouls here in the second half. 16 fouls with 13 to 10 to go. And Indiana's going to start shooting free throws here, and that is going to mean trouble. Kitzel almost pushes off. Gannon hustling. The ball is Iowa. Great hustle there by Mark Gannon, the sophomore from Iowa City Regina High School. And that's excellent hustle. The Hawkeyes are sky high for this one. What an emotional game it has been. 13 minutes, five seconds to go. I hope you've been with us all the way. What a great ball game it's been. Kevin Boyle's hot. 
but he can't hit this time. Kitchell with a rebound. I tell you, this Kitchell is playing one fine ball game from Indiana tonight. He's doing it at both ends. Colbert, who has the last five Indiana points. That's Risley in the corner. Brown to Colbert from outside. And Colbert scored from all over the place. Seven points in a row for Ray Colbert. And Indiana now trails by just one, 38 to 37. Brookins is up off the bench. He's going to come back in. They need his perimeter shooting right now. And he, he does such a nice job on the board, too. Crashes it to Boyle for the baseline. Kevin Boyle playing his best game so far this season. He has 14 points. Iowa shooting lights out right now, though. A lot better than that 33% in the first half. Steve Cartino being very sure not to foul. Iowa by three, 40 to 37. 12 minutes to go in this very important game. Inside to Ray Corbett. Bobby Hansen way up there, and the foul on Corbett. I'm sure that Ray Tolbert would like to have that one back, too, because those are unnecessary fouls. The man has gotten a rebound, and all he does is make contact. Tolbert with two personal fouls. Indiana with three team fouls. 11.55 to go. And no one there to inbound the basketball. And Mark Gannon comes down to do it. Bob, this is going to be a long 11 and a half minutes here. I think you're absolutely right, Bob Tolbert. Garfino against the sophomore, Tony Brown. Garfino up the middle, loses the basketball. Garfino forced it just a little bit and lost the ball. Colbert inside to Kitchell, makes crashes it up, and Steve crashes it, picks up his fourth foul. Now that's a very damaging foul. Watch it on the replay here, see whether he really does make contact with him. But here again, Kitchell goes back up into the basket. Yeah, Kitchell's worth his waiting goal tonight. He's getting our big men in foul trouble. He's scoring well. He's starting to knock down his free throws. And Kitchell will be shooting two. But they're checking their charts now. Lou Olson is checking the charts. He says he doesn't believe Steve Francis has four fouls. They're checking it right now. They're checking it with the official scorekeeper. Steve says, I've only got three. Rich Grand, our statistician, will check and see. And Rich Grant says that he has four personal fouls, but Steve Prasperson says he has three, and so does Lute Olsen. Well, we're checking it over right now. It's not going to make much difference. Uh, it's going to uh, be all up to the official score of what he's got, because that's the way it is. Although Iowa has three books. There are three of your coaches down there that got books, and they say there's only three on Prasperson. But apparently someone was in error. They've got him marked for four in the big book, the official score. Rasmussen will sit down. A long time to go in this one, 11.35. So a lot of pressure on Steve Waite, the big 6'11 senior who did it so well against Georgetown in the regional finals last year in Philadelphia. And Kitchell at the line. All of a sudden, it's gone very cold there. He's missed his last three opportunities after going 9 of 10 in the first half. The second one is perfect, though. And we have a timeout of the floor. Iowa leading at 40 to 38. This is the Iowa Television Network. Big and tall is beautiful as she. Big and tall men's wear. Hi, welcome to our new house. Come on. <laughs> oh, it's gorgeous. Now, don't look around yet. I'll get Mary. Talk about moving up. That's fine, okay. And a tennis court. Sure is out of our neighborhood. Well, this job's no better than yours. They must know something we don't. Where has he did it? Dane Bosworth knows. Offices in Waterloo, Cedar Rapids, Dubuque, and Iowa City. News Center 7. It's people with the experience, the talent, the drive to cover the stories that have a direct effect on you. They cut through the razzle-dazzle to get to the heart of today's important issues. Make the news make sense for you. Get with Eastern Iowa's number one news service, News Center 7, noon, 5, 6, and 10. What a display of fan support here in Assembly Hall. The Go Big Red banner came out, and all 17,000 fans plus are up on their feet trying to exhort their Indiana Hoosier team on to victory. Right now, Indiana trails by two to the stubborn Iowa Hawkeyes. 
40 to 38, 11.30 to go in this ball game. Steve Sarfino with the basketball over to Vince Brooks. Looks inside, Speedway was open. And knocked away, but Brooks will retrieve it. To Sarfino. Sarfino passes up the shot to Hanson. And Hanson calls out a play, screamed it, and Sarfino retrieves a bad pass. I was being a little bit careless with the ball at times out here. I tell you, Bobby Hanson, they have a lot of respect for him. He's having to work hard to get his shots tonight. Hanson gets it to Carfino. Carfino from 18, good. Another big bucket by Steve Carfino, and Iowa leads it by four, 42 to 38. Well, that's why Lute Olsen recruited him. The kid is a real blue chipper. He's not afraid to put it up in the clutch position. Randy Whitman. Really the floor leader out there right now for the Hoosiers. Whitman who sat out all but five games a year ago. And Iowa will get the ball. Kitchell could not find the handle on a pass from Whitman. So with 10.30 to go, Iowa can get up by six. That would be their biggest lead of the ball game. They led once by five and kicked out of bounds by Risley. And Kenny Arnold will come in. And here again, Luke is using that bench well. He's being a chess man down there. He's giving these kids about a two and a half to three and a half minute blow. Hopefully it's going to pay off here in this last 10 and a half minutes. Mark Gannon comes in along with Arnold. And Hanson and Tarfino sit down. So important in that win over Michigan is how well the Hawkeyes played in the final minute. Gannon to Arnold. They're both fresh right off the bench. Brookings trying to hook his man inside. That's Steve Wade in place with Steve Crafton who has four fouls. And Wade fouled with the basketball. He knocked over Ray Tolbert in the process. No foul was called. Oh, that's too bad. There was contact back there somewhere. Either Wade backed into him or he backed into Wade. Somebody had to. They both fell down. Isaiah Thomas, if you're wondering where he is, he also has four personal fouls. He has been sitting on the bench most of the way here. And the foul knocked out of bounds. It will go to Iowa. Bobby Knight jumps up. Look at the look on his face. He wanted a foul call. Yeah, Bobby said they knocked my man out of bounds. And he said a few words there that I'm not going to tell you what they were. Both coaches have had their share of jumping up and down off that coach's bench. And Boyle against Whitman. To Arnold, inside to Brookings. He'll play a baseline double good. Iowa's biggest lead, 44 to 38, excuse me, 935 to go here. That's what Iowa has to do. They've got to get that high percentage shot, and they've been putting it down to Brookings and to Boyle on that baseline shot. Ray Tolbert. Good. I'll tell you, Ray Tolbert has scored nine of their last ten points. Yeah, he's a workhorse in there now. He's taken over for Kitchener's half. Found the hot hand. Tolbert unofficially with 13 points. We've got nine minutes to go here at Assembly Hall. Auto good! Brown ahead, but the Hoosiers look like they're huffing and puffing a little bit right now. Boyle not called for it. Bobby Knight is up off the bench. He wanted a foul. Colbert almost travels. No call. And a foul outside on Wade. So Bobby Knight doing oh, an now, excellent job. Look at Luke. Watch, watch Luke go right down there with Bobby Knight. He figures if Bobby's going to talk to him, I'm going to talk to him too, and I don't blame him. you got to stick up for your old Hawkeye team. Get your nose in there. Lute is not, Lute is not going to let Bobby Knight intimidate that official alone. Watch him go to the basket on this replay now. Yeah, Wade just lost his man. And Kevin Boyle was the man called for the personal. He has four fouls. Kevin Boyle has four fouls, but he'll remain in there. At the free throw line, shooting one and one, Ray Tolbert. And that first one is good. So the 6'9 senior co-captain doing the job for the Hoosiers right now. Bobby Hansen comes in, and Kevin Boyle will sit down. Exactly Ray, a friendly greeting from the Hoosier crowd when he sat down, as a matter of fact. Ray Colbert was what they call Mr. Basketball of Indiana in 1977. So he is well established here in the Hoosier State. Iowa leads it by four. Bobby Hansen all the way. He gets hammered. 
And the foul will go against Iowa. I think they're going to call it against Hanson. And Hanson is upset visibly on that one because I thought that he had, I, I think he thought he should have had the basket and probably should have had the foul himself. See if we can watch it here now. See whether the man has established it underneath there. Yeah, wasn't a bad call. Unfortunately, we didn't get the basket on the drive. Free throws are keeping Indiana in the ball game right now. So Ted Kitchell, the man there at the line, their best free throw shooter, and Isaiah Thomas has come back in the ball game with four fouls to play the last 839. And you gotta hit on the front end, and Kitchell does just that. This is gonna go right down to the wire, but we've got a good eight, eight minutes and 39 seconds of raw to the basketball. Iowa leads it 46 to 44, but Indiana has scored the last four points on free throw. Arnold wants to get a pick from Mark Gannon. Gannon inside, Treble gets it out to Arnold. Arnold dishes it back to Bobby Hampton, and we'll start it again. Inside the wait. Back to Arnold. Just, just patient, that's what they gotta do. Take their time, don't let this stop rattling. 8.13 to go. The clock seemingly moving so slowly. Ludosa wants a timeout. He can't get any notice from his players. Brooking. His players are not looking at him. Everyone's standing here. Wants a timeout. And the shot was so good. And Indiana gets the ball. Ludosa wanted a timeout for the last 15 seconds. And no one looked over here. Isaiah Thomas. Over to Ray Pope. 7.45 to go. Indiana can tie this game up at 46 apiece with two points right here. And I'm sure that when Iowa gets the ball, they will take a timeout. Colbert against Wake. Crafterson and Boyle set to go back to the ball game. They both have four personal fouls. That's just Isaiah Thomas. There's Colbert. He looks inside to Kitchell, decides not to pass to it. And Brookings fouls Kitchell. Well, I'll tell you. Iowa is going to have to have a long bench because they've got a number of people in foul trouble now. And some of them are our best shooters. And that's what we've been doing the last half is been hitting that short perimeter shot. So we would hate to lose a Boiler or a Brookings. So Vince Brookings will sit down. He has only three personal fouls. Not in immediate trouble as Kevin Boyle and Steve Crasserson are. Kitchell at the line again. He's been there all night long. Good. 17 points for Ted Kitchell. Kitchell makes it in here and ties the ball game. This place will be rough. And you're absolutely right. And we have a timeout. The game tied at 46. This is the Iowa Television Network. Looking for value? Then work to Toyota and the Iowa Toyota dealer in your area. See the Toyota dealer in your area. You're talking Toyota. It's great to be a Hawkeye academically and athletically. As the nation's physical resources decline, we must depend more heavily on our human resources, our educated selves. In the 1980s, more than ever, Iowans will need higher education. We must do everything possible to keep our colleges and universities at the top academically. Their future is our future. in mind the two numbers as we play the final 725 with a score tied at 46. 11 to 3. That was what Lute Olson went over and told one of the officials here tonight that Indiana has been called for just three personal fouls in the second half. Iowa has been with them 11 times and that has given Indiana an opportunity to tie the game back up. Iowa is going to make them come out. The defensive team has to go out to get him. And 
We're tied at 46, and Lute Olsen puts the four corners in. You'll remember he tried to call a timeout before that last Hawkeye miss. Resulted in two free throws at the other end for Indiana tying the game. This is what he wanted to do prior to that. This is not a bad idea to do this right now, just to calm, calm down the crowd and throw a little water on them, just to dampen their enthusiasm a little bit. It'd even be better if we can come off with two points. Boyle guarded by Risley. And Arnold gets it back again. Good ball handlers in there for Iowa at this point. This will, this will save our foul situation a little bit, too. We can run a little time off the clock. Patterson and Boyle each with four, and Isaiah Thomas staying away from the basketball, not hounding it right now, also has four. He spent a lot of time on the bench of the season. He's not really been the big factor. It's been Ray Colbert and Ted Kitchen. 6-11 to go. A long time to count it down. Bobby Hampton over to Mark Gannon. Two sophomores, highly sought after a couple of years ago in the Iowa recruiting ring. Hampton to Boyle, guarded by Risley. And there's Boyle again to Gannon. 5.49 left to play. And Indiana, remember, has several fouls to give. Only three team fouls here in the second half. So they can give a foul and not send Iowa to the one and one. Iowa's used almost two minutes of that clock now. We're down to 5.25. Crafterson, his first opportunity to touch the ball. All of a sudden, Boyle started to be caught out there without anybody at Crafterson came from the deep spot for relief. They can't be caught napping. They've got to keep watching that ball. Isaiah Thomas on Bobby Hansen really is not staying away too far. Even with four fouls, he's putting a little pressure on. Trying to break a man open for a layup. And it can happen as you relax on defense. Boyle comes in, gets it to Gannon. 4.55 left to play. It would be really something if Iowa were able to wear down seven minutes off this rock. Boyle. Now Boyle is a very up right here is the five second call. Bobby Hansen into the middle, over to Cannon. Quickly out to Kevin Boyle. 4.35 to go. Boyle is handling that ball in great fashion. Risley is getting a little bit tired trying to stay up with him. But on the other hand, Boyle is, is getting a little bit tired too. And that's what Lou Dawson called the and time out. Another timeout on the floor. The score still not at 46. This is the Iowa Television Network. The Blue Ridge Mountains and Milwaukee are half a country apart, but both places mean one thing to these guys, something great. The Blue Ridge Mountains mean bluegrass music, and Milwaukee means beer. Cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer, and boy, do they sound good together. Whatever you think of the town of Milwaukee, you think of beer. And old Milwaukee ain't as great as its name. It don't get no better than this. 17 on-the-farm field tests could tell you how to kill more corn rootworms this year. In field after field, 65% of farmers we tested got the same results. They switched from phosphate to furidan. They got better root ratings and more dead worms. This season, switch back to furidan, the only carbamate. Furidan, chemic, it's in the class by itself. The Iowa Hawkeyes waste about three minutes off that clock. From a little over seven minutes down to 424. We're still tied at 46-46. Iowa once led it 46 to 40, but six straight free throws by the Indiana Hoosiers in the one and one situation tied this game up. They've taken Risley out because of the work that he was doing against Boyle. They're giving him a little breather, putting Brown back in. They still have Isaiah Thomas on. Bobby Hansen down deep. Now he switches and comes out to the top five. And Jim Thomas is in there as well. He's a quick guy, number 20. Randy Whitman in there, along with Ted Kitchell and Ray Tolbert. The Hawkeyes going with Bobby Hansen with the basketball, Kevin Boyle, Kenny Arnold, Steve Prasterson, and Mark Gannick. Under four minutes now, down to 348. Arnold has to watch that lead elbow. You can get called with a charging foul. Anything could happen here this evening. Bobby Hansen gets the ball back. Down to 335 now. Boyle, good pressure put on by Indiana. 
and Hanson getting instructions from Lute Olsen on the sideline as well as playing out there. Trasterson back to Arnold, pounded by Jim Potter. And Arnold takes the shot and scores! Beautiful. Big bucket with 3.15 left. Big basket. This is going to be a big turnover here. If Indiana does not hit down here, those Hawks will go back into their slow down game, so it's imperative that they try to score. They get something on that board here. And Isaiah Thomas will work on that clock now, under three minutes to go. Jim Thomas, Randy Whitman with the basketball, back to JT, and that's Isaiah. Don't anybody leave their set. I don't think anybody is, Bob so. Good perimeter, patient basketball by the Indiana Hoosiers. That's Whitman, he won't shoot. Jim Thomas, he's not a shooter. And Isaiah with Thomas, good pressure, stolen away by Kevin Boyle. What a steal, what a steal it was. And Bobby Knight did not even jump up and down, so he obviously uh, was not even thinking foul at that time. This was a case, of, case of young Isaiah Thomas trying to go too far in amongst those big trees in there. And he's trying to dish it off, but there's just too much congestion in there. 2.17 left, and we have a timeout on the floor. Iowa is leading it 48 to 46 to 2.17. What a ball game it's been. Of course, just one of the exciting games you'll see this season on the Iowa Television Network is this one. Next Thursday, the 29th, the Purdue Boilermakers come to the Fieldhouse. A rematch there with the Iowa Hawkeyes trying to avenge their last year's loss in the Fieldhouse to Iowa. But on Saturday the 7th, Illinois is Iowa's guest only one week after the road game at Champaign. Join us all season long on your Iowa Television Network station. Well, I, I think really right now what you've got going on the Indiana team, the fact that the big fellas had to stay in there and protect that, uh, that glass, and they went two down. Now they're getting down there on offense, and I think that they're getting a little bit tired. And Isaiah is trying to carry a little bit of the load now. That, that has to be a, a, a tremendous turnover because if the Hawks come back down here, Indiana has to go out to get him. They have to go out to get him, and I think that some of our quickness may pay off here in the last couple minutes. Bobby Olson, the lovely wife of Coach Lute Olson, just below our broadcast position, just looked this way and winked. She told me before the ball game she had a premonition. She said she doesn't have them very often, but she said that Iowa was going to win this one in a very close ball game. Well, it has been a close ball game, and the Hawkeyes are in the lead right now. Two well, points. Well, 48 Lute, to 46. Anything can happen, right? Yeah, Lute had indicated even before the game, he says, that we don't feel like we have to take a back seat to anybody. And he indicated that I think we can win here. So he's being very optimistic and... Uh, I, I think his ball club thinks that he can win right now, too. Bobby Hanson's got to get the ball in. Brookings is wide open, and he scores in a layup. Iowa by four, 50 to 46. Bobby Unbelievable. Knight. Two people underneath. No one took him, and Vince Brookings scored it. It almost looked like they forgot which end they were defending. Isaiah Thomas with four personal fouls over to Ted Kitchell. He's done a job. The idea here for the Hawkeyes is not to foul. Ray Probert tries it. The ball goes up, and the foul inside. It will go against, I'm sorry, I have an official standing in the way. I cannot well, see who the like foul is against. against Indiana because the Hawks are set. Watch this and see, see whether you can find out who the, the culprit is here. The Hawks clapped their hands, so I'm assuming that it was against Indiana. It was against Ray Colbert, a big, big foul there. Ray Colbert on the foul. Iowa gets the ball. A four-point lead, 50-46, to 46, 153 to go. And a substitution into the Indiana lineup. Bobby Knight talking to Ted Kitchell. He says, think, guy, how in the world did Vince Brookings get so wide open? Tony Brown is back in there. Kevin Boyle's got to inbound the basketball. Bobby Hanson retrieves it right in front of Kenny Arnold. Boyle with it. We have a hard great Iowa Hawkeyes up by four points. Almost stolen away. Knocked out of bounds to Indiana. We may have a hard time seeing the Iowa offensive end here. The entire Iowa Hawkeye coaching staff just standing up right in front of us. A couple of scores. Purdue leads Northwestern 49 to 45. Five minutes left to go in that one. Michigan over Illinois 42 to 37 at halftime. Another big game right there. Illinois also in first place. Whitman over to Kitchell. Whitman won't shoot it, but Kitchell will over Boyle. No good. Jim Thomas way up in the air. Isaiah Thomas with 127 to go. Randy Whitman for the free throw line. Scores! 
15 to 48, 120 to go. Boyle inbounds the ball, heavy full court pressure. Kenny Arnold blows it up. Brook and scores! Boy, what a sensational pass that was. And Brook has took that baby right to the hole. Bobby Knight trying to get his men to push that ball down the court and get that thing up. Griffin, Ray Corbett right there, it goes down. And Assembly Hall erupts. Ray Corbett went up with an offensive rebound, scored the bucket, and the basket was good. Watch this replay here. Watch Colbert go up to get that rebound. Beautiful shot. I tell you, Ray Colbert is not an unknown. Mr. Basketball in 1977, a member of the 1979 Pan Am gold medal team. So he has been around. He's played at least five seasons of collegiate basketball by playing on the Pan Am team. And Hanson committed that personal foul, his fourth personal foul, and Ray Colbert can pull Indiana to within one at 52 to 50, the current score, with 102 remaining. Whoa, what a ball game. This telecast is a presentation of the Iowa Television Network with all rights for television owned by Carnaby Square Teleproduction. Any use of this telecast either in whole or in part, live or delayed, without the written consent of Carnaby Square Teleproduction is strictly prohibited. Well, I'll tell you, you know, running back down the floor with a four-point edge, letting him go up for a three-point play, possible three-point play here if he makes that free throw. This game will not be decided. It'll be kind of interesting, Bob, to see how long it takes to play a minute and two seconds here. This is great collegiate basketball. This place is going nuts over here. 17,300 people going wild. Think Bobby Knight has changed his mind at all, whether the Big Ten is better than the ACC? Yeah, I don't know about that, but Bobby Knight before the game indicated that he didn't think this was an important game, but I think he was just whistling past the graveyard. He wants this one, and he wants it bad. And so does Lute Olsen, who you saw right there. Ray Tolbert will be at the free throw line, shooting one. He can pull Indiana to within one. Iowa, 52. Indiana, 50. Nervous time in Assembly Hall. The Hawkeyes have never won here, not since 1972, when this beautiful arena was completed. This will be a great win for whoever wins the ball game, but it's a must win for the Indiana Hoosiers. They've got to win at home. If Iowa should happen to get this one, boy, what a sweet victory this would be. Oh, my. That one bounced around seemingly forever before it finally went down. And we're under a minute. Bobby Hansen pounded by Tony Brown. Hansen all the way. Iowa by one. To Steve Plasterson. Bobby Hansen protecting the basketball to Kenny Arnold. Started by Jim Thomas. 45 seconds, and Jim Thomas is called for the foul. Right. It won't mean anything because Indiana now six team fouls. So Iowa will inbound it. The next one will send Iowa to the free throw line to shoot one and one. It will obviously be a big one, especially if it's the front end of a one and one, and we have a timeout call. Well, here we go with the chess game. These coaches are going to be... They're going to milk down this last minute and two seconds to something fierce, and I don't blame them because both coaches are in their huddles and going over as much of what they practice in this kind of situation as possible. In, in my coaching days, uh, it was almost too hard to expect them to listen to everything because there's 17,000 people yelling. They're, they're trying to listen, but they can hardly hear. So you hope that the coaching that you've done all week long is going to pay off. There's still lots of Hawkeye basketball left this season, of course, and your Iowa Television Network will be there bringing you all the action. Coming up next Saturday, the 29th, at Purdue in the field now. That should be next Thursday night, followed by Illinois on the 7th, Northwestern on the 14th, Indiana on the 19th, Purdue again on the 21st, Michigan on the 26th, and Michigan State on the 5th of March. Don't miss any of this exciting Hawkeye action right here on the Iowa Television Network. Well, I can hardly believe the amplification here, Bob. I took off my 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 little uh, headset here for just a second, and it's unbelievable the noise these people are making out here. They're all in red here for the last 45 seconds. They're Indiana Hoosiers. Trail the upstart Iowa Hawkeyes, 52 to 51. And Francis did knock the man down. There's a little Both acting going on. Called. A little acting going on in there, trying to get that foul. 
Francis is back to Boyle. Boyle pounded by Tony Brown. Remember, Iowa can call a timeout in case they don't want that five-second jump ball call. Under 26 seconds now. Arnold. Indiana's going to have to be forced to foul here in the final seconds, and the free throw becomes very big. 18 seconds now. 17. 16. Bobby Hanson at the free throw line. Looking. Bobby Hanson. And it should be an intentional foul. It's yeah, got to be an intentional foul. That has to be an intentional foul. Hanson was jumped all the way up into the stands. He must have slid a good 15 feet. And Lou Dawson is objecting to that foul. And I don't blame him. Isaiah Thomas will sit down. We're waiting to see if it is an intentional foul. The Hawkeyes are clapping at this point. We've got to see if that is the call. These free throws obviously loom very, very big. Yeah, here we come. This is service time, Bob. And two free throws is the official signification. So Iowa got exactly what it wanted. Isaiah Thomas, not really a smart foul. You just want to touch the guy. You don't have to knock him into the first row of the seat and commit the obvious intentional foul. Now he really did. He really put the block to him. I suppose in a situation like that, though, you've got to make the foul and you've got to make it count. And it was very obvious to me. The official was going to see it. But Bobby Hanson actually did slide a good 15 feet on his back and almost went up underneath the, a table at court side. Unofficial statistics kept by statistician Rich Grant along with us here in Assembly Hall. So Bobby Hanson with no points at all in this ball game. Would I these be the two biggest points of his young career? Well, I think that this is probably uh, a good sign uh, from the Hawkeye standpoint because it just shows you that while Iowa has five players in double figures are averaging that, a 14, a 12, a 310, uh, one of those people does not have to have a hot hand to keep him in the ball game. And Bobby Hanson's been playing great defensive ball out there and great ball handling. Of course, Kenny Arnold and Vince Brookins came away with the big buckets there down the stretch. Brookins a couple of layups, and Kenny Arnold is the man who broke the tie when it was 46-46 for several minutes there. Iowa leads it 52-51. to Bobby Hanson at the free throw line. Hanson, an excellent free throw shooter. 85%. He's hit on 17 of 20. See if he goes through his normal routine of practicing the free throw. There it is. Now Two it's opportunities. It's kind of interesting. At Michigan, when Michigan beat Indiana in overtime, Bobby Knight walked off the basketball court before the game was even over. He was so disgusted with his players. I don't think that's going to happen tonight. He's going to stay with them. And Hanson has put Iowa up by two. He can put them up by three. And he does. That's a big, big play. Nine seconds to go. Eight seconds to go. Oh, by Hanson. Woo! The Iowa Hawkeyes Woo! are going to win this one here in Assembly Hall. Fouled by Ray Tober with four seconds to go. Iowa up by three, 54 to 51. Bobby Knight is beside himself. He knows it's all down the tube right now. He just took a nice seat. He's leaning back in his chair. He just cannot believe it. And here again, guys, this is it. If you've got the talent, you can beat any jinx going. The Iowa Hawkeyes will beat the Jinx here in Assembly Hall. Bobby Hanson did not get on that scoreboard until the last 10 seconds, and he's going to make four of the most valuable Hawkeye points he's ever made. Bobby Hanson. You thought those two points against Georgetown were big. How about these against Indiana beating the Jinx here at Assembly Hall? Iowa 55, Indiana 51, and now it's Iowa by 5, 56-51, four seconds to go, it's all academic, Indiana will score at the buzzer, and Iowa wins it, 56-53, beating the Jinx over the Indiana Hoosiers. We'll be back to wrap up this exciting basketball game on the Iowa Television Network. So the story here in Bloomington, Indiana, Bobby Hanson does not score at all, all game long, after starting for the Iowa Hawkeyes against the Indiana Hoosiers tonight, and gets four of four free throws in the final 10 seconds. And the Iowa Hawkeyes beat the Jinx here at Assembly Hall, their first victory ever in 10 basketball games. Iowa over Indiana, 56 to 53. Bob Stubbs, your comment. Well, I think the, what won it for Iowa was right down to the end here. They were very patient officially at about that six minute mark. They started their slow down offense. They were still trying to score, but Indiana was closing them off at the free throw line. They, they slowed it down. They took about three minutes off the clock and they did not try to force things. I think of the last half on the opposite side of that thing, the Iowa zone 
actually shut off the big boys from getting the ball down in deep. Uh, it took away some of their rebounding. Some of their big fellows were starting to have to take their corner shots, which, of course, put them out of position for rebounding. And I think that this was a patient Iowa offense that really felt the difference out there tonight. I think here again, they probably wore down that Iowa, I mean, that Indiana uh, Hoosier ball club because actually Bobby Knight did not go to the long bench tonight. He played a, probably at the most seven people very much. In fact, uh, this has got to be one of the great wins of all time, and boy, it's great to be a Hawkeye tonight. It certainly is. Iowa is defeated the end of 56 to 53. Some of the unofficial final statistics here. Vince Brookins with 16 points unofficially for two big layups in the final few minutes of his ball game after it had been tied at 46. Kenny Arnold, who hit a big bucket to break the tie, 48 to 46, he had 12 points. Steve Prasterson with eight points and played so well despite four fouls in the late going. Kevin Boyle played perhaps his best game as a Hawkeye. 14 points kept Iowa in the game when Indiana threatened to increase their lead. And who can forget Bobby Hansen's four dynamic free throws down the stretch. Four points, that's all for Bobby Hansen. Mark Gannon with two, Steve Waite with two, Steve Carpino, a couple of buckets from outside, four points. For the Indiana Hoosiers, they were led by Ray Colbert. At one stretch, Ray had nine of ten Hoosier points to keep them in the game. He finished with 19 points. That was game high. And Ted Kitzel with 18 points, but we didn't hear much from him in the second half at all, Bob Schultz. No, this, this is a, well, just what we talked about before. Kitzel was a little bit tired. The zone took away his down deep penetration. He was forced to go to the side, and he couldn't come up with the long bomb. Uh, prior to the game, we were talking with the former Indiana great John Laskowski, who does the color for the Indiana Iowa or the Indiana Television Network over here. And John mentioned us something very, uh, I think, very observant that we could that we can see tonight: the fact that Bobby Knight has not settled on a first five that he can uh, that he can go with, and this is not the time to be experimenting. He should have five people ready to go in the Big Ten, and he does not. And so Iowa now can claim first place in the Big Ten again with a record of four and one. We'll see if they're there by themselves or are tied. Special thanks tonight to Tim Noonan, to statistician Rich Grand, to Frosty Mitchell at halftime, my cohort Bob Schultz. This is Bob Hogue saying so long from Assembly Hall. The story tonight, Iowa in a big win over Indiana, 56. Iowa-Indiana basketball live from Bloomington, Indiana has been a presentation of the Iowa Television Network and brought to you by Elanco, the makers of Crestland. Controls over 35 weeds and grasses and soybeans. Works rain or shine, no doubt about it. By Old Milwaukee Beer and your local distributors. By Hardee's, best eaten all around. By FMC, makers of Curadan Insecticide Nematicide. For corn rootworm control, Curadan is in a class by itself. Buy your Iowa Toyota dealer. When you talk value, you're talking Toyota. And by Merchants National Bank, it pays to get checking with interest. And by Dane Bosworth with offices in Waterloo, Cedar Rapids, Dubuque, and Iowa City.